Yeah, so today I wanted to chat a little bit about um, donation platforms, um, about why nonprofits need to think about their e-commerce. And, and I, I say e-commerce because it needs to be looked at in the light of e-commerce. Um, yes, you're not selling a product, but in some regards you're selling a service. When people donate to you, what they're really doing is they're giving towards a service that your nonprofit provides uh, in hopes that you do a good job and provide that. Um, so it, it, in a roundabout way, it is actually e-commerce and it is definitely an area where Wapiti works and an area where I have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, expertise and, and I've spent a lot of time. So let's get into it. Let's talk a bit. So here I say, I'm going to have fun here. Nothing ever seems to work the way I want because I'm not used to this yet. But I'm going to go ahead and share this window and go full screen with that. And nope, the full screen is not working. So let's see here. How do I go? That's the right. This has a really weird... This browser I use makes it really funky. Um, here, I'm gonna just drop it here. This might help me. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Getting there, getting there, getting there. I started and I have to stop. Gotta get things right. We'll just go like this. Cool, this will be good enough. It does get cut off. I think my video aspect ratio is weird. Um, but you know what, I'm gonna go with that. So right now, you should see, let's get it, we're gonna do, there we go. Okay, now I see it's scrolling. Okay, perfect. Sorry for all that. You should see uh, this GiveWP platform. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the platform that your nonprofit uses. There are all these platforms that promise a full, you know, you can take donations, you can do fundraising events, you can do X, Y, Z and this and that and this. One of the issues I run into all of the time, every single time with these platforms, is that your nonprofit or, or whatever nonprofit it is I'm speaking to desires something different in at least one, if not multiple aspects. So for example, you may go with, uh, so I'm gonna just pick on one that I'm, uh, There's a few, I wanna be careful on the ones I pick on here. You know, I'm just not gonna pick on anybody. I'm just gonna kind of talk ethereally. If you have a nonprofit, you know what I'm talking about. So this isn't a, a thing. So let's say, let's say you chose a system, you talked with their support, you were really, really excited about what they told you it has to offer. Um, it's got a CRM, the manager giving donor base. It has um, all the reporting tools you need um, to be able to see who's donated what and if they've, you know, how much they've given over the years so you can send your end of the year um, deals. It's got the ability maybe for the client to self manage. A lot of them don't, though. That's the crazy thing. A lot of them don't have that. Um, it has uh, the ability to even give in a recurring fashion, which is what this primary conversations about, but I, I kind of want to get into this a little bit more. Um, it gives you everything you think you need. But then as you get going, you realize that the CRM doesn't connect with your email marketing platform. So how are you going to get the right kind of outreach to your clients or to your donors? Um, because there's no communication. So somebody maybe was giving monthly for a year and then stopped. But your email platform doesn't know that. So you can't target them and say, hey, we realize you stopped giving, um, you know, if time, you know, put together something nice. You know, if times are tough, we, we're sorry, we realize that it's hard for people to give continually and we really appreciate the giving you've done. You know, please keep us in mind when you want to start giving in the future. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to us, because maybe they stopped giving for a reason and you need to know what that is. If you'd like to reach out to us, you know, here's an email address or, come to this website page and fill out the form. Please tell us um, you know, why you stopped giving. However you end up wanting to communicate with them, you can't because you don't really know. Yes, you can have staff go in there and, and depending on how big your database is, spend hours upon hours upon hours trying to sort these. Then you can hire somebody to take those individually manually sorted groups and then import them into your marketing platform properly 
and make sure that they're individually sorted so that you can then manually email them. But what ends up happening is you have a huge disconnect. And I'll tell you, I've worked with a lot of nonprofits and every single one of them had a disconnect in the outreach side, so what I call email marketing, um, and the, uh, the platform, the CRM in the platform. Every single one. Now that doesn't mean that every single platform out there has this problem, but everyone that I've dealt with has had this problem. And it's such an easy prom problem to remedy if you have the right tools in place. One of the things that I'm really proud of, um, both personally and for my business, is our extensive knowledge of tools, specifically surrounding the WordPress ecosystem, because that's what we've targeted to work with. Um, but you know, we know the tools built for WordPress that you should stay away from. We know the tools that work really, really well and and do you know amazing things for your for your business, for your nonprofit, um, for you, if you're a personality. Um, we we know the right tools to use. Now, now sometimes there's multiple right tools, but more often than not, there's a lot of wrong tools. And so, one of the things that that I've always taken pride in is being able to guide customers and even potential customers towards the right solution. So the reason I have GiveWP up here is I wanna explain my solution for this, right? So I've always been a big fan of GiveWP, probably for the past, gosh, I don't even know when they started up. It may have been 10 years ago, um, eight years ago. Anyhow, I, I, I don't know specifically when they started, but all that said, they've been around a while and their product is really, really good. And it's a really, really affordable solution. So when you think a lot of these platforms, even the inexpensive ones are gonna charge you 50 bucks a month, maybe more. With this, with GiveWP, the best, the best plan, the one that we typically do is this 349 plan. Now, sometimes we'll do the 500, but this is annually. So at basically 350 bucks annually, um, that's what, just under $30 a month? Sorry, I can't like think and live stream because you know my brain doesn't work uh, on those two modes at the same time, but you're basically 30 bucks a month, a little less, and you have a ton of stuff, which we'll get into, but you have a platform that can replace any other platform out there. Now, that could give you this same, like this, I, I'm basically making the spiel for GitWP that every other platform would make to you. Like we have a single platform that will do everything you want. And so you may say, hey, Dan, you just literally said that that's what the others do, but that they fall short. You know, it's one of those, there's my, my goat. It's a goat screaming moment. <coughs> Dan, why are, you, why are you saying to me that this thing does, the very thing that you said everything else does, but isn't good enough? And so the truth is, you'll probably find areas and zones of this where you don't get that complete connectivity that you would, um, that you would want, just like any other platform. The difference is GiveWP is built on WordPress. It's built with um, WordPress at the core. And so the beauty of WordPress is it's a system that you own that you can take other add-ons, hopefully high quality ones, we would help guide you with that, and plug them together and they will learn from each other because they share the same base of information. GiveWP, when you buy it, you own that license for a year at a time and all of the information within GiveWP is yours. It is on your server, on your website. Any integrations you make, that whether they exist or you actually pay for a custom integration, connect. So with that, you have that complete rounded system that you could get from another place, except that you can now plug your own holes. You can now make it work better and more for your organization than a lot of these other solutions. So. I, I, I typically when I pick a tool, so this, you know, with e-commerce and businesses, I choose WooCommerce and I choose it for a reason. Um, I work a little with Shopify, but I still think WooCommerce is superior. Um, there's a reason why I choose the systems I do. And first and foremost, owning your own information is a really big part of it. So it's a double-edged sword, right? You, you own all the information. So if you do something stupid, you do something stupid and you lose it. That's why we do backups and all sorts of things for our clients so that there's never going to be a, a, a major problem. However, 
with owning your own data, some other large company does not own your data. You own your data. You can pull it when you need it. You can move it away from, from Wapiti into another hosting company. You can move it from that hosting company to another hosting company. Any company that hosts WordPress and is hopefully trustworthy is a good destination for your website. What you're hoping to do is find a company who will be there for you, who has great uptime on their servers, but will also be there to help you fix problems, figure out things, do training videos, all the things that, that I've built Wapiti to do because I want my clients to be self-sufficient, empowered, but also have that security blanket of, of a team behind them to help them with anything. So I haven't even gotten into recurring revenue yet, but it's really important, especially if you're starting a new nonprofit or you're looking for a replacement solution, it is super important to really thoroughly double check your options and to realize that your only options aren't these pre-built systems that exist to give you a um, easy time. Because the reality is, is give WP technically is a pre-built system. It's just one you throw on your own site and it exists to give you an easy time too, but it's not the first thing that comes to your head, right? You think of, I, I really, I really want to say some of these names, but I'm going to just stay, I'm going to stay back. I normally, I'm normally not too hesitant to pick on, on other companies, but I'm going to hang out just, just to be safe on these. But there's other companies that I have worked with and I've actually worked directly with their team whose platforms are, are good. They're not bad, but they're not great. And they're not customizable because you're dealing with proprietary custom code. And so you can't do much to them. Within the WordPress ecosystem, you personally don't need to know anything because more than likely somebody's encountered the same request you have and has found a solution for it. Um, and in the off chance that you do have a very custom thing, you can hire a, another company. Once again, Wapiti is there um, to, to, to build that thing you need. So let's look at GiveWP a little bit. And then I really want to get into the subscription part because that's the, the, the subscription donation subscribers. Um, or recurring donations, I guess is a better way to say that, because that's that's really kind of the heart of all this. But once again, can't have good recurring donations if you don't have a platform that supports that and does and, and furthermore supports your organization moving forward. So I don't know how much we really want to go through all the features here, but it has all the standard stuff you would expect, right? Take donations various ways. There's reporting. There's templates. I actually have this installed on multiple client sites. I'm, I'm not going to pull it up here on the stream just for, for privacy and, and concerns, but it, it works really well. Um, you know, we get monthly reporting um, on all the donations given. We have the ability to go in just like on an e-commerce site and see our donors, aka customers, what they've donated or aka spent. You know, it, it has a perfect correlation to e-commerce to, 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 you know, like a business selling something. And you could see, you know, people who have subscriptions, people who are one-time donors, um, you know, and then it can auto-generate reports at the end of the year, so you don't even have to think about that. It's really awesome. So let's look. Let's look. Go into the add-ons because I think the add-ons are a big part of what makes GiveWP awesome. So think of GiveWP as kind of like a base product. It provides the CRM, it provides the giving, it provides the user accounts and the user access. It has to obviously all be integrated into your site, which is one of the things that we do. But it, it's basically your base. So it's similar to say WooCommerce, where you can put up a website, add your products and start selling. It may look ugly um, or you may hire a company to make it look good. But um, you can pretty much start selling pretty quick if you know how to install a plugin and set up a few pages and add your products. GiveWP is very similar. You install the GiveWP plugin, you can set up your uh, donation forms, and then you integrate those forms into your site, and then that's how that works. Now, the cool part is where it brings the add-ons into play. So we can look through just some of these. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is super cool. I actually have not had a donation client uh, who's wanted to integrate this, but I have added it on a test site and played with it, and it's a super cool option. Um, allows people to do fundraising and um, yeah, yeah, it's worth exploring if you're into if, if that's something you want to know more. But some of the basics, recurring donations. Now, now they put these little must-have tags. Um, okay, yeah, I think a lot of them are must-haves or at least very good to haves. But recurring donations are exactly what you think. Somebody says, I want to give twenty bucks a month for the rest of my life. You know, they can do that. And then let's say in two years their circumstance changes and they say I want to give fifty dollars. They can go in and adjust. 
and maybe in a year their circumstance changes again and they can stop giving. It allows them the full control over what they're giving your organization. This has been great for the clients that I work with because rather than getting that upfront $300 donation, they now have people that are giving 20 bucks a month and because of that, they're now giving more frequently and in the end, more amount because it's a small amount that comes out every month. Um, it works really well for the for the 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 the, do, the donation. Um, sorry, for the nonprofit, the donors like it because they're not wanting to donate because they don't like the cause. They want to donate because they do, and now they don't have to think about it. It really is a um, out of sight, out of mind thing. If if they don't constantly think about you, they may forget to give to you the next time, unless they have it. You know, like once a year, they give a set amount. Um, and even then, you could do annual recurring donations. So this can really take the headache out of your donors um, out of your donors lap and actually make it super easy and also semi guarantee you income um, for your for your nonprofit um, form field manager just lets you extra customize the forms yeah it's it's I feel like it probably should be part of the core but whatever it's it's there fee recovery super cool if somebody donates you know 200 bucks but you have a three percent credit card for processing fee it will let them check a little box and now all of a sudden that 200 bucks will add another six dollars on it'll be 206 give or take a few pennies um to basically say that the customer is going to also cover your credit card processing fee um in the end it's a prompt for them to give a little bit more because you're going to have to pay that credit card processing fee either way but there's a little bit more make sure that that what they're giving you actually goes the full distance um for example with my church i do the same thing when when we uh, when we give to our church um, we always do it online just because, hey, I'm a geek and I work online, so why not do that? Um, but it has a little fee recovery checkbox. And I'm like, you know, it's a couple extra bucks. And I'm saving the church a couple extra bucks in credit card processing. Sounds good. So I check it. Great, great extra thing. It's just that little encouragement. It lets people know that you also incur fees and it helps them help you cover it. Um, funds and designations um, is, is exactly that. If you, uh, for example, I've, I've worked with, with quite a few pro-life um, pregnancy clinics uh, over the years. And one of the things that they'll do is um, they'll have like a, a walk or run for life is what they call it. Where basically people go a distance, they get, um, you know, other people who say that they're going to donate per mile or, or whatever. And then when it's all done, they collect their donations. It's just kind of a fun way to make a rather boring donation not boring with this you can actually have so that when person goes to give they can choose what they're giving to and they can choose that walk for life or run for life um or if you're building a new building that building fund you can put it in here you know give to the building fund my church just did that and having a building fund was was a really good designation next uh here the pdf receipts straightforward somebody gives they get a pdf in their email and then um, we'll see there's another plugin, but there's the annual report, which this would also send them a PDF. They can also download the PDFs from the website. Really easy, straightforward. Tributes. Um, scenarios really, really depend on when you'll use this, but basically you can give in the name or in the memory or in honor of somebody else is, is ultimately what this is. So, you know, if you're if your donors, like say maybe their spouse passed away and their spouse really believed in your cause, they could give a big gift in their spouse's name. Um, they could. It doesn't even have to be they passed away. They could be alive and you can actually have a notice sent to that person. Um, so it's a super cool uh, thing too. You know, the rest of this stuff starts to get a little geeky, but you got a text to give. Now the, the texting to give is an actual f separate company that's a fee, but you would integrate it through this in order to have that all work together. If you did use Salesforce, most smaller organizations don't because it's such a big product. But, um, you know, uh, Gateway, here's the annual receipts I was talking about. So annually, it will automatically email uh, the giving report um, for, for tax purposes to the, to the donors. Um, if you do multiple currencies, um, you know, more uh, giving, uh, uh, what do they call them? Cred uh, credit card processing, uh, give, you know, uh, money taking places. Um, donation upsells. So if you do sell products as well, if somebody donates, you could say, hey, for an extra $20, we'll give you a shirt type of thing. Um, for me, this could get to a little bit of more rocky grounds of feeling super pushy, but I think if done in the right way, it could be a really cool thing. Um, plug in with Google Analytics. Um, 
pretty much if it's installed right on your site, this isn't a big deal, but this can actually make sure that the individual donor tracking is working well. Um, integrations with ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, there's probably some other ones here, um, but those are your marketing platforms. Manual donations allows you to receive a donation and enter it on behalf of the customer so it shows in their account. Um, extra connectivity, another gateway, and perform gateway so you can actually have it go, maybe you use multiple gateways or you are working with another organization so you can connect each form to its own payment processor. Pretty crazy. Email reports, so you can quickly email customers reports based on you know whatever it is that they wanna know. Um, yeah, the rest is pretty straightforward. Mostly a lot of payment processors. Let's see, anything else worth? Yeah, no, the rest are kind of ConvertKit, Constant Contact, uh, Aweber. Those are all uh, marketing platforms. Um, so, so a lot of pro uh, credit card processors are marketing. So that said, if you're looking at this and if you're even paying attention to this stream at all, whether it's recorded or you're watching it live, I don't, I probably don't have any live. Let me see, is there anybody live here? No, I'm still at zero. So hopefully somebody's going to watch this in the future because I think this will have a lot of good information. Um, I just derailed myself. So if you're looking at this, you're going to say, well, you know, a lot of the other things have similar or the same or potentially even more. So here's the, that's the thing. And I covered that already is that really it is expandable sometimes for free, sometimes for very low cost. Sometimes if you really want something custom, then there will, there'll be a decent cost involved, but everything's within your control. When you go this route, you, you piggyback this back on the back of WordPress and uh, WooCommerce, and this is not where I wanted to go. It has me logged in. Why am I logged in? I'm not even logged in. There we go. So if you're on WordPress, it connects, it uses that same database. And actually I should probably be at the .org website so that you own all of your stuff. And then on your own host, you can move it, you can change it, you can delete it. We've got backups, hopefully. Uh, if you work with Wapiti, you will. Um, it's all within your control. And so you couple that buildability that WordPress gives and you couple it with having your um, entire donor database and your, it has a full CRM. We didn't even look at that, but you can easily, and let's see, does it show the CRM part here? Let's go to all features. You can easily manage your donors through this really well. Powerful, powerful, do powerful donor mad management. Man, I can't talk all of a sudden. Um, all sorts of fun stuff here. You're able to completely manage your, your donors and they're able to, once again, self self uh, service their own uh, accounts with you. Um, so let's go back here. We'll get back to the camera. Cool, I think I can turn off this window for now. So, Here's the here's the part I really wanted to get to. So so you get your platform right. Now let's say you decide not to go with with my suggestion. That's cool. What you want to make sure is that your platform does have recurring revenue um, and the ability to take monthly, annual, weekly, daily, whatever kind of donations that you want to receive. You want to make sure that you have the ability to do that. Fighting a yawn there. It's been a long day. I'm doing this in the afternoon for me. So once you have ensured that, that you have that ability, the next thing is how do you get people to start doing the, the recurring donations? So the beauty is if you have an organization that people are donating to, recurring donations are actually really easy. In business, if you're selling a product, getting people to basically commit to buying that product over and over is a much tougher sell. Now, if they love your product, it becomes a lot easier. If they love you, it becomes a lot easier. But compared to that one-up purchase, there's that yawn, sorry. Compared to that one-up purchase, it's a lot harder for them to make the leap into, shoot, now I'm having to pay on a monthly basis or every three months or whatever. It's just a lot harder to do. However, um, yeah, I was just thinking something here. Let me look. I'll look at something really quick and then I will get back on subject. I'm getting very, uh, very, uh, did 
distracted, I guess is the right word. Yeah, I think we're okay. I want to make sure the right mic was picking me up here. It just occurred to me that that may not have been the case. Um, so, so yeah, in a business setting, recurring donations are a harder sell often more than not. In a giving setting, if somebody believes and cares about your organization, which is the whole reason they're probably giving to you to begin with, or maybe it's a tax write-off, who knows, but typically it's because they believe in you, then it should be really easy. If somebody wants to give to you, and let's say they say, hey, uh, I'm gonna make it nice and round and easy because that way I don't have to think too hard. I have $120 I wanna donate to you for the year. You should say thank you, you know, take the $120 and then say, hey, just so you know, I can set you up on a $10 a month donation um, and you even have the ability to help us cover our, our credit card processing fees. So with that, what you've done is you've got the same amount of money except that they covered your processing fees. So technically you got a little bit more. You've also got a very small drip amount coming out of their account. So, you know, it, depending, it depends on your donor, right? The big donors have no problems. They drop a few thousand dollars and move on. Uh, depending on how big your organization is, could be, you know, uh, tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions. But, you know, for a lot of smaller organizations, you know, your, your larger donors are breaking a thousand, breaking maybe five or ten thousand dollars. But if you can get them to commit more on a monthly basis, even the same amount, it's hitting them less. And so they're thinking about it less, yet they're still thinking about it. So you're still present and top of mind with them, but it's not pulling out $1,000 out of their account all of a sudden and them going, that was quite the sacrifice. Instead, it's pulling out, or let's say $12,000 or $1,200. Instead, it's pulling out $100 a month. And they see that and they're like, oh yeah, 100 bucks a month. That's, that's perfect. I, I really believe in these guys. So if there's a big mind game between that lump and then that. So that's why a lot of companies will make their prices lower when you commit annually, um, especially subscription ones is because they know it's a bigger hurdle for you to get over, but on the same vein, they're also guaranteeing you give them that money. In the case of a, do of a donation or a nonprofit, um, you can also do the same, but you really can't give a donate, you can't give a discount because they're not buying anything. So instead, encouraging them to just give monthly can actually really work in your benefit. Also, if you have your portal set up right, all those self-serve tools will help that donor feel like they're really in control. And I know in some regards, the idea that they could go on and cancel their donation um, without talking to anybody sounds a little scary. I know in the business world, um, when, when I started my previous business, we actually disabled the ability for customers to cancel their account because we felt like, hey, they need to call in. We need to have a chance to save them. And, and there's some legitimacy to that, but nowadays people, they want the confidence that they can just stop if they need to stop. They don't wanna fight with people. They don't wanna have you upsell them or you know, try to reconvince them they've already made up their mind. Um, if they do wanna to talk to you, they'll call. If they want you to try to convince them, they'll call. People, there are people who want to be convinced, and if you can't, then they'll, they'll stick by their thought process. So adding that ability for them to just click and say, hey, I'm done um, for now, I'm done for good, or let's hold off a couple months, all of that um, is super important. The right platform will let you do that, will let them do that, and it will create ultimately confidence. So one of the coolest things about recurring revenue models, whether you're a business, a nonprofit, uh, you know, a personality doing maybe like a, an online site, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing, if there's recurring revenue, you're building confidence in your business with that. Now, you can lose confidence through multiple other things, but if things are done right, they're like, man, this is a smooth, easy process. I can stop if I need to. I can take a break if I need to. I can give more if I want to. All very easily online. Um, you know, once again, referencing my church, um, we, you know, depending on, on how the year's going, um, my income will change um, generally within a certain range, but I always try to give a certain percentage of my income to my church. And I'm able to just log in. I have to, unfortunately, with their platform, it's not the same platform I recommend, I have to actually cancel my giving and re give, which is a little less than ideal, but because I believe in them and I want to, I do that. But, um, but the right platform will let you just change it rather than cancel. Um, that said, it's really nice. It, it makes it easier to give because I know I'm fully in control. So 
I think that's kind of where I'm going to wrap it up. I think really when we're talking about don donors, one of the one of the best benefits of a nonprofit when it comes to recurring revenue, or in your case, recurring donations, is it's it's actually a much easier approach. Um, people really, if they believe in you, they really do want to give, and the ability to give less more frequently for a lot of people is a benefit than giving one lump uh, at the same time. For me, I actually, you know, whether I give a lump, um, you know, I mean, I guess it all depends on certain uh, times of life, but for me, it's usually not a big deal whether I give monthly or give a lump because I'm, I'm planning for it. However, I usually pick the monthly plan, not for any reason other than I can see the accounts are balanced. And as I am taking care of my finances, I can just see, hey, it's it's sticking with what I expect, not do, 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 boop. Oh, hey, I, that's right, I donated you know $5,000 to XYZ. So um, worth, worth, worth thinking through this. Um, if you are a nonprofit, you, you really should. You really should have online giving. I know of a lot that don't still, so uh, that's a big part. You really should have a platform that allows you to grow with it even if you're small and brand new, or if you're a large nonprofit, um, you want to have a platform that you can grow with, that you won't outgrow and have to pay a lot of money to move to a new platform, a lot of internal training, a lot of headache and heartache. Um, and then with that, you wanna make sure that that platform um, you know, connects to what you use. So once again, email platforms or whatever. Um, you want to make sure that it has a good CRM and you want to make sure that it does recurring donations and that it manages them really well. So kind of in conclusion for me, and, and honestly, the point of this was not to rep GiveWP, even though that's literally what I've done. Um, I just think it's a great platform. I, I make no money on this. I won't have any affiliate links or anything. Like I just literally think GiveWP is the right platform for most, especially small and medium-sized nonprofits, but it's fully capable for large-scale nonprofits as well. And it really does give you everything you need while also keeping extendability within your control, which is a really important part. So I think uh, this was a bit of a shorter one. I guess I'm only, I've am only i only done this for a little over half an hour now. Um, the last one was like four hours. But um, really, I just wanted to focus on nonprofits because most of my marketing, most of the things that I talk about, most most of my focus is on business. But Wapiti works with nonprofits, and I love working with nonprofits. Um, and I think it's important to understand that a nonprofit has to run in a lot of ways like a business. Not in all ways. There are definitely places where it doesn't run like a business. But a nonprofit that thinks it should be pretty much contrary to business in every way is a failed or failing nonprofit. The best nonprofits all actually are businesses that find a way to recycle the money so they're not making profit. Um, you know, I, I look at uh, World Vision, for example. I was able to visit their, their headquarters in Washington when I was living out there and got to spend some time and meet some of the people there. And I mean, it is run pristinely like a business with a few exceptions. They have prayer time and, and other things that you wouldn't find in a business. But it the reason they're as successful as they are, I think, is in due, a large, due in large part to the fact that they run smoothly. They have people in charge and people who manage and people who get things done. And I think just like the inner workings of a well-running nonprofit, your nonprofit's website should also have a lot of the inner workings that reflect an e-commerce website. And so that's why that's why we work with it. That's why I made this video. That's why I actually care about the platforms that nonprofits pick. I, I've, I've seen nonprofits throw away hundreds of thousands of dollars and pick the wrong platform doing so. Uh, there's one particular one in my head that they, uh, we sent them a proposal. I've been working with them in some other capacities and sent them a proposal to basically deep dive and find the right platform for them. And they talked to another company that worked with Salesforce specifically. And that other company sold them on Salesforce because that's what the company did rather than doing a deep dive and finding the right platform. And uh, I, I'm not entirely sure where it ended up, but I, I do know that they had to have spent stupid money and have it all thrown away because I ended up ripping it out later. Um, so, so yeah, when you choose 
do the research, talk with someone. Wapiti, I mean, at the very least, get a hold of Wapiti. We can give you, you know, even for free, I'll give you a few options, a few things to look at. And if you really want to, to pay for a deep dive, I would be happy to do that. Um, but make sure you're choosing the thing that's right for your nonprofit um, before you jump in. I think I think it's weird that this is the ultimate conclusion I'm coming to for this video because it wasn't where my brain was. But the more I'm thinking about it, I've, I've, I've encountered more headache and heartache when it comes to the donation, CRM, giving platform uh, with nonprofits than I have with any other single aspect. Um, I mean, there's there's one particular nonprofit I worked with for probably seven years, seven or eight years. Anyhow, I worked with them for a very long time. And through that process, while, while Wapiti was working with them, they changed their system three times. And each time... Once again, it's easier to buy into somebody telling you their system is the right thing than it is to spend a little bit of money with somebody who doesn't have, like, doesn't stand to gain from it. To spend a little bit of money with that person and have them do the work for you and then tell you what it is you need. And they, they did it three separate times while working with me. And never once... <laughs> I gave them some suggestions and said, hey, I'd be very happy to. Never once took me up on it. And the amount of frustration and money spent there was not as big as the last thing I talked about, but but big enough to where, yeah, it would have been it would have been good had they had they spent more time. So the goat. That's all I wanted to do is just scream. Cause 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 when you're relying on people to give you money and you're not even spending it right, ah, okay. All right, I'll get off that. Um, yeah, so hopefully hopefully, if you've watched any of this, um, it was enjoyable. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.